Okay, so I'm at a campsite. Um, I've just been filming some TA Outdoors episodes uh, yesterday. Stayed overnight down here in Dorset at a campsite. And the plan is today to make a kind of LRF uh, or light rock fishing, sort of ultra light lure fishing, um, and some rash fishing on lures, hopefully, just down at the coast here. Tide is falling, but it's not ideal conditions, but I'm gonna make a video anyway, guys. There's the tent, done me well. It's my old tent, I actually use a bell tent now. But, gonna pack it up and get on the road. here on the south coast of England at my rock fishing spot. I fished here quite a bit before and used the ragworm as bait. Going really well on it. Um, we've got a relatively strong southerly wind so it's coming straight into my face here which shouldn't affect the fishing too much. It does affect the filming. Uh, obviously I get wind in the microphone and things like that so it might be a lot of GoPro work today um, and I can tell you about the lures in a bit that I'm using and the setup and everything like that but I've got to try and catch some fish first. Probably start off with some Mariyuki um, Isomi ragworm. It's like a fake ragworm. Uh, done really well on it. Little three gram jig head I'd say because it's, it's fairly strong still here the wind. Um, and we'll give it a go. I'm using a one to eight gram fishing rod, six pound braid, four pound fluorocarbon link, proper LRF light rock fishing style. Let's see how we do. There you go people, only a small one. It's nice to know they're there. And that was on a chucked up piece of isomi worm. And obviously in that kind of natural ragworm color as well, because I always fancy the ragworm color. I've got two colors, I've got that and a green. But I really like the uh, that sort of ragworm color. And a lovely bright looking fish. It's only small, but I'm getting bites all the time. So gonna chuck back out, see if I can get some more. Another one on the Isomi. This time a completely different colour. I believe this is a cork wing wrasse from the black dot at the back of the, the tail there. I'll show you a close up in a minute. Uh, but really aggressive takes. They're on the bite. Unfortunately, you can't sort of choose the size. I don't really want to go bigger with the lure because I want to catch a few fish first. But I may end up putting a larger jig head on and one of the larger Isomi worms on after that. They're getting bigger, folks. There we go. Getting there. Ultra light. Gotta love it. There's a real bend in the rod for such small fish because you're using such light tackle. Again, those fake ragworm working really, really well. I believe they're called the sandworm actually, but doing really well. Three gram jig heads, all you need. Lovely colours on this fish. Let's get it back. What if it's me looking down on me? The world above must also be. This could go on for infinity.
better fish. And this time that was on the fish action, my favourite Attractor Shad DS. Slightly bigger lure, but same jig head size. But that, my friends, is the fish we're after. Really slamming takey, absolutely crash dive towards the, the kelp and the, the snags, because that's what they do, Ras. Lovely colours on it. What a stunning fish, we'll get it back. And I'm definitely chucking this lure out again. So after the suntan and a bit of nice rock fishing, I went into Weymouth Harbour itself to try a bit of urban LRF fishing. Using the same setup, small three gram jig head and a Mariyuku Isomi worm. I see the stars and the planets who follow Expect to have the universe by tomorrow Just sit back and relax, don't worry The work you wait, no need to hurry Okay guys, so that was filmed obviously quite a while ago because I had the old beard going, uh, the patchy beard, still there, it's just a little bit more trimmed. But I thought I'd just quickly, um, now that I'm back at the house, go through uh, just a few of the lures that I was using on that trip uh, and also the lead setup I've got as well. The dog has taken over my chair, which he normally does every time I try and work. So I'm going to do it on the floor over there. Okay, so lure-wise, um, this isn't actually the colour lure I was using. I was using the Isomi, uh, still the sand one, but it was in the, the sort of ragworm colour. These I got from when I was down in Weymouth, just at Weymouth Angling Centre. Really good tackle shop if you guys are down there. They're amino acid boosted, which means they've got this like coating on them that basically adds a bit of extra scent to them. Very useful. They are almost identical to a ragworm, uh, obviously, but they're a soft plastic lure. Very, very effective ras bait. These are the XL ones. I was using uh, smaller ones than this, but you can. What you can do. The great thing about these is you can just chop them up to the length that you need for your jig head or your lure. You just chop them up wherever you feel necessary. In this sort of my main, well, just sea fishing lure for small wrasse and things like that box. Um, <clears throat> so what I have in here is far too many fish action attraction, uh, the DS, the drop shot lures. That's what I caught the wrasse on at the end. It wasn't a huge rash, not my biggest, but uh, that's what I sort of upgraded size-wise to uh, towards the end, uh, and it was in the kind of mottled brown colour there. But that I've generally done well on natural colours with rash, not these really bright fluorescent colours. I've always done well on dark. So, for example, my top three ras colours would be that, that, and that there. So you've got like your your, your light green there. If I shut that box, these would be my top three wrestlers. You've got your light green there, you've got your brown there, which I caught on your mottled sort of brown, and your darker kind of kelp weed colour green there. You're basically matching the environment that the wrasse live in, which is generally uh, kelp beds, dark kelp beds, and things like that. So I use dark lures. Tends to work for me anyway. I don't know about you guys who go wrasse fishing, but I'm sure you perhaps feel the same. Uh, these, this colour is more for my perch, blues, natural blues, whites would be for perch. Um, and then I've also got bigger lures in here, which I do use for wrasse, uh, but mostly pollock. Um, and this is another attractor shad, but it's I think about five inch this one, uh, four inch. And this is a soft plastic paddle tail lure, if you can see there. This is killer, killer, killer. This is an absolute killer lure for uh, pollock. Deep dropping off wrecks on a French boom, or even just Texas rigging and cranking up slowly, hit the hit the deck, hit the bottom, Texas rig it, wind up slowly, it's got an awesome paddle tail on it. I've caught lots of big cod uh, and pollock on this in Ireland, on both colours. Um, bright sunny days, I'll use pink. Dark cloudy days, I'll use black. Don't ask why, guys, I just, this is one of those things. So that's the sort of main lure box that I would take to, for wrasse fishing. Uh, I do have other lures, but I just haven't got them in the box that I do take with me. Again, mostly about this size. I take a few stick baits as well. 
uh, plastic, soft plastic stick faces that are mostly this size. I wouldn't really go any bigger, uh, and I do, you know, it's. I think about four to five inches is probably the max. You can go bigger, but I generally don't go as uh, much bigger than about four to five inch lure. Jig head wise, you saw what jig head I caught them on, but if I'm bait fishing for wrasse, then I tend to use <coughs> either cannonball leads. You can use nuts and bolts, which I do use nuts and bolts, uh, but I also just use these either cannonballs or these sort of pear shaped leads. Uh, this is a bit heavy, this is a two ounce. Uh, I'd usually use half an ounce to an ounce. But that, these are ideal for if you're bait fishing and you have either your ragworm on a drop shot, uh, so higher up the line, or just on a simple running ledger. There's a, there's a nut there. There's a sort of simple uh, nut that I would use as well. Just nuts and bolts. You can use old engine spark plugs and things like that because at the end of the day, you're going to lose them. It's the snags. You don't want to waste money on, on you know, decent leads and knowing that you're going to lose them. You could tie them rotten bottom style so that they, you've got a weak link of maybe three, six pound line that way if that gets snagged, you only lose the lead and you get your hooks back. These are the ideal hooks, worm hooks, long shank. If I was um, ras fishing, I'd start off, if I was ras fishing and I was just got to a new area, I'd start off with a small hook like that. Uh, mackerel jigs, these are ideal for, these are, this is my killer mackerel jig, it's the Trinx Pro Shore jig. It's got a little bit of glittery uh, bits at the back of it. Single hook, um, I've also crushed the barb down a bit on it, it makes it more sporting. That's just on a split ring so that it's got the maximum amount of movement and chance of a hookup. And I think this is about seven grams, this one. It might be 10 grams, but a little swivel again, split ring and a swivel there. S such a simple uh, lure, well, jig really, uh, but very good for vertical fishing and you know just casting out and jigging back in at a constant speed. Then I've got my Dexter wedges as well, which is, uh, again, a quality mackerel lure in the summer. This one has a treble hook. You can change it out for a single hook. Depending if you want to keep the fish to eat, I'd probably go for a treble. If I was sport fishing, catch and release, then I'd go for a single. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Jax! Ah! We're trying to say goodbye to the people on YouTube. Dub it! Guys, thank you very much for watching. Sorry, it's a bit of a short video. Uh, I'm actually going out on a week-long trip to Ireland uh, end of June-ish time. So much more kind of ras fishing like that. Uh, but yeah, we got I've got loads more LRF sessions planned as well over the summer. This was just a bit of footage that I'd had st stored up and I wanted to uh, release it. I know it was only short, but hopefully you guys maybe gained some tips there. Uh, but I'll do much more, uh, a much more in-depth video on LRF and ras fishing uh, another time. But thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you are on YouTube a lot in general and you like the outdoors, please check out our other channel, TA Outdoors, which is more bushcraft. Got text. Please check out our other channel uh, called TA Outdoors, which is much more bushcraft and um, camping and stuff like that. And also subscribe or download our free to download bi monthly fishing magazine, which is all round fishing. Uh, comes out every two months. It's free, there's about 80 pages worth of articles in it. There's a link in the video description. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon in another TA Fishing video. Say bye-bye. Say goodbye to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs>